Hello, I am Fionn. And I am Jonathan. And together we are Fionathan. We're going to share with you our food waste disruption story. I was a healthy baby. I loved food then and I still do today. Here's one of my first meals and a much more recent one. My, my early life was simple and routine. No television, a stone cottage with a thatched roof. We visited the cows and pigs each week when, when we collected our vegetables from a farm. But Fionn's early life was also complicated with regular trips between his two parents' homelands on two continents. For his first four years of life, I was still living in the United States. So Fionn was a real jet setter. I have a healthy relationship to nature. I loved animals when I was a little boy and I still do it today. I became an amateur ecologist. Here are photos of the stranded whale course I did. We should point out that what looks like a bottlenose dolphin on the beach there is really a water-filled bottlenose dolphin yeah. uh, replica. Yeah. But it's as heavy as a dolphin would be. So they teach how to um how to carefully roll it and, and keep it yeah. and keep it well. It was quite a sad course to take. It was, because yeah. most most times that whales or dolphins beach, um, they're not um savable. They they right. they come up on purpose to die. Yeah. And um but then again, there's sometimes some healthy ones that you can save. Yeah. But, but you've done a lot of training and independent studies yeah. in, in nature over the years. Yes. I also teach children about wildlife. I've visited 90 primary schools across Ireland and taught over 10,000 children. I think that helping young people to appreciate the natural world it's very important. You and I recently wrote two blog posts for a group called Conservation Optimism. And they're a group based at Oxford University. Mm. And we were also interviewed for a podcast called Enabling Commons, which is all about the intersection of climate change and disability. And that's created at McGill University in Montreal. I have my my own interview series on YouTube, and, and I ask climate questions of experts there. I love my wagon. So Fionn used to take his wagon everywhere he'd go. It didn't matter if there was anything in the back of it or not. Yeah. As a teenager, my mom helped me to, to start a recycling project. And that was with your second wagon. You literally yeah. pulled the wheels yeah. right off the first one. In our small town, we were expected to bring all glass recycling down to the harbor and sort it into larger bins. I could co collect up my neighbor's glass and bring and, and sort it for them. It was a nice excuse to hone my wagoning skills 
and a nice deed for my neighbors. So just before Fionn moved from Mount Shannon in County Clare up to here to the city of Galway, the health department agreed to give you funding so that you could design and pay for your own supports. Yeah. And we decided that you would hire me. Yes, that's right. Sir. And that we would start a social enterprise together. Yeah. And our social enterprise is Fionathan Productions. And the company has three goals. And what are they, Fionn? Um, the, the, the three goals are, well, the first one is to help me ha have, a, have a great life. The, the, the second one is, is to share our stories in hopes uh, of, uh, of, helping, um, of helping others to, uh, to have great lives. Uh, and the third and, la and last one is to re remove obstacles that prevent people from having great lives or to know lives and change the world. Yes, having a government budget means that Fionn sometimes has to do things that he doesn't want to do, well, just like wearing a mask during the COVID scare. I decided I need to eat good quality food and rarely indulge. I wanted to, to learn to cook, and I added that to my list of work my supporter would do with me. It's fun to, to think of things like learning independent skills as the goals of our company. It's probably why we first approached Food Cloud to ask if we could be the recipients of a weekly food donation. So uh, Food Cloud is a social enterprise much larger than ours that, um, that uh, made arrangements with all the large supermarket chains yeah. and said all that food that, you, um, that, that, you, that goes to waste, mm -hmm. that you don't sell but, but goes in the bin, we can find people, charities mostly, yeah. who would like to use that food in one way and another. Yeah. And so they're the, um, they're the in-between. Yeah. And when we applied to them, we said, well, we are not a charity. We're a social right. enterprise. Yeah. And Fionn wants to learn cooking skills. Yeah. And who knows, maybe one day we'll be teaching cooking classes. Yeah. So we'll take a, um, a weekly donation. And they said, right, okay, we approve you. Uh, this was um, cutting a long story short, yeah. right? Uh, we had to take a food handling course, right? That's right. And, yes. um, and eventually they, they gave us options of which ones we wanted to sign up for. Yeah. And um, the first uh, donation we went to collect was in Tesco. Yes. And they gave us like, um, oh, I don't know, about six trays of food. Yeah. And we said, oh, well, we could use this and this. And we picked through them and we took yeah. about one and a half trays. And we were real happy with that. And we went on home. And then we got an email from Food Cloud saying, um, no, 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 you're supposed to take all of it. And so we, we thought, well, what are we going to do with all this food? Right. It's much yes. more than we could eat ourselves. Yeah. And I thought, well, let's share it with our neighbors. Yes. Because we had moved into an apartment complex. Yeah. Right. And we had lots of neighbors. Yeah. And I said, Fionn, would you like to bring round food to the people we know yeah. in, in your wagon? Yes. And, uh, and offer it to them. Yeah. And I think you were pretty thrilled to do that. Yes. And then. Uh, yeah, definitely. We still have plenty of food left. And I said, well, what about all the other neighbors? Why don't you go around and just knock on people's door and ask them if they'd like food. Yeah. And you weren't the least bit shy about that, were you? No, I wasn't actually, no. And how did people respond? Um, some, pe some people um, responded gratefully and others were a bit shy or timid yeah, at yeah. first. Yeah, but, but along the way, um, 
well, more and more people kind of joined in, right? And yeah. we're, we're happy to, um, to not only to, to take some food, but also to let other people know and to lend a hand. And we've developed a, a network now, yeah. right? And um, I, think, I think it's really important because there's estimates that uh, roughly one third of the food in the food chain mm. is wasted. And um, so whatever we can do to, to change that system. Yeah. And, you know, putting food on people's tables. It's great, right. isn't it? Oh, it's yes, great. it is. We, we love yeah. it. And I think others really do as well. I feel that I am a part of my community and that people appreciate me for, for who I am. Independence is fine. But it's really just one step on on the way towards interdependence. I want to be able to to rely on people and for people to be able to rely on me. Yes. So now we'll tell you a little bit about each of the uh, the shops that we work with. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll start with Tesco because okay. they're the ones that, that uh, provide us with the most food, don't they? That's right. Yes. And each, um, each of the three chains, um, they have a different philosophy <laughs> of, um, of what is food waste yeah. and, and what should be shared. So in the case of Tesco, they discount everything first. So you might have noticed in, if you go to a Tesco in the afternoons in the chilled mm. section, yeah. they often have these yellow stickers where things are discounted down and then down and then near the end of the day, well, they used to just throw it all out and now they, they, um, they make a food called donation yeah. from it. So we often have those yellow stickers that says discounted, but it's all, yeah. there's, there's such big supermarkets that even though we might get six trays, eight trays on a single evening. Yeah. And a tray is a big quantity of food in yeah. itself. Um, they'll all be food with that day's date on it. Yeah. That says sell by today. And so that's why they, they, they don't keep it for one more day. Yeah. But having said that, I mean, everything is, is either like fresh enough Right. Meaning you have another week or so to eat it, or you can put it in the freezer and, and wait a month or whatever. Yeah. Or it's not even ready yet. Like when we get pears and avocados yeah. and such, they usually are too hard to eat. Even though it said sell by today, they're not ripe yet. Right. Right. So, yeah. so we, we rarely, very rarely get food that's actually like past consumable yeah right yeah it, it happens once in a while where you get a uh like a potato that's all soft right. and yuck or something like that or a yeah. whole bag of potatoes but it's not very common at all right so tesco um provides us with breads fruits and vegetables meat dairy prepackaged meals pies and cakes all yeah. of those kind of things mm. then moving on to Lidl, um their their food well they they have eggs yeah. a lot of eggs that oh, they yes. offer us yeah that's uh, the show. breads fruit and vegetables but they also would have for us paper products chocolates crisps and even some big spanish hams whole hams yeah. with the leg in it and all that yes um that i think retail for 40 or 50 quid a piece kind yeah. of thing and in their case it's not usually um uh, short dated food right it can be yeah but it's often the packaging is damaged too so even the things that are sort of their um their the the items that they have in for just a few weeks yeah the stuff in the middle of the shop even um broken packaging on that sort of thing yeah we'll often get and because they get a lot of um little fingers that that rip into crisp packages and, or you know the the, the big packs with 20 little packs inside or chocolate boxes of chocolates or something. A lot of those end up in the, in the food cloud. Delivery. Yes. Um, yes. So, and in that case, the, whereas Tesco brings all the food out onto the, the shop floor, 
for us to pick up in one yeah. corner. In Tesco, or rather in Lidl, we go right into the warehouse. And yeah. Our food is waiting there for us. Um, and then they also have, like, it's almost like what in the States we call dumpster diving, because inside a lot of their produce um, is just in a great big bin yeah. ready to be trashed. And sometimes we go through that. Yeah. And it'll be the sort of thing where there's a net of oranges. And out of the 20 oranges, one of them is just a little green um, mold bomb. Right. And all yeah. the others are perfect. And of, yes. of course, they can't sell it with that one. So they take the whole thing and they toss it in the bin. And then we take it out and we leave the the spoiled one, and we take the yeah. other 19. Right? Yes. Yeah, that's right. And so that's the story with Lidl. And Aldi is completely different. Yeah. Aldi, the manager told us, well, we don't, we don't keep any of the breads or eat produce or anything because we don't think that's of high enough value to make it worth your while. Right. So it's only meat, but they have a um, policy that the meat that they're going to give us, it's not short-dated. But rather, you might notice sometimes near the checkout, people sometimes change their mind yeah. and they leave a pack of meat yeah. by the checkout counter. Yeah. And rather than bring that back to the cooler on the, on the floor, they don't know how many right. minutes it's been out of the, out of the cooler, but, yeah. but um, they're confident that it isn't spoiled. They put it into this flash freezer super cold yeah. and it turns to a frozen block in minutes and that's yeah. what we get from yeah. them and so strangely they have this um attitude about food safety that they'll only give us frozen meat yeah and that's fine too yeah. right oh, oh yes so we've said on this slide that these are our benefactors but we, you can question that too, the whole relationship. It works well for us, yeah. but we also so, realize it works pretty well for them too. And so we question whether we are there, um, whether they're doing something nice for us or we're doing something nice for them. Right. Or a yeah. bit of both. Yeah. And what's that image there of that um, crocodile? Um, that image there, um, 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 it, uh, that's the Egyptian clover um, is doing the Nile crocodile a favor by, by cleaning in between its teeth. Yes, and the, the crocodile never chomps down on the bird because the bird is helping the crocodile, yeah. helping it with its oral hygiene. Yes. Right? Keeping its yeah, that's right. mouth healthy by taking out all the little scraps of, of meat. Yeah. And in that way, we are helping Aldi and Lidl and Tesco. Yeah. Um, they, the, uh, we saw a sign at um, Lidl that said, zero waste. We have zero waste. And we can tell you that that's not actually true because we see those big bins that are going out the door. Yeah. They, they, I'm sure they've gotten much better than they used to be. But we did ask, well, what do you do with the stuff that, that we don't take? Right. And they said, well, all the shops in Ireland bring it to one place and then it's incinerated. And, you know, the heat from the burning will turn turbines and make energy out of it. Yeah. But it's very inefficient. It's not like they, they don't separate out any of the packaging or anything. They just throw everything all at once into the fire. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, that's not zero waste. <laughs> right. By our standards. Yes. Oh, wait, also, by, we have the image of the crying Indian there. Yes. And you may not have heard of, but as a, as a child growing up in America, there was a very effective ad campaign of the crying Indian. And basically what it told people was, maybe you can see it. It says at the bottom on his chin, people start pollution people can stop it. And a whole generation of children grew up to be very passionately anti-pollution. And um, because the Indian cried when he saw all the trash in the rivers and such. But it turned out that this whole ad campaign was a very clever move by the um, 
I think it was the bottle and can industry. Oh, yeah. Because okay. individual states were putting in place um, uh, like laws that required that cans would have a deposit on them and that people would return the cans to the to the places where they bought them yeah. after they drunk whatever was inside. Yeah. And then the can companies, the bottlers and yeah. such, would be responsible for recycling it all. And they wanted to make sure that did not happen. And so they came up with the very idea that it's people who are responsible for the pollution. Yeah. And you should feel bad if your parents are polluting. And they yeah. very effectively changed the course of the dialogue entirely. And they yeah. turned it from this problem of waste is about consumers rather than about us big corporations. Yes. And, and so we wonder and we worry a little bit that um, we're being used yeah. to greenwash. Right. Um, and so, um, yeah. I guess that would be something interesting to talk with all of you about. That that's yeah. that's a question we have. Yes. So um, we do try to use all the items that we're given, or um, find other homes for them, if if not ourselves. Yeah. Uh, on the rare occasion when food is actually spoiled, we separate the compost from the recyclables and we bin them accordingly. Uh, or we find an unexpected use for them. So here's what we did with dozens of cut flowers. Yes. We did a photo shoot. And here's, and, and here's my application photo for the International Melon Head Society. Mm -hmm. We should make it clear that we are no saints. Exactly. We bring home all this food in my diesel engine car. Uh, we've been on four plane trips in the last three months, and yeah. we're planning to be on 10 more train, plane trips before the year is done. Uh, but we do plant trees and uh, community pollinator gardens. Yeah. Just outside the window there, we can see oh, the yeah. wild flowers. Yeah. Um, we buy most of our clothes secondhand, and we disrupt the food waste cycle. So we hope to leave the world a better place. Yes, in touch, if you want to explore how you might do something similar in your neighborhood, we are happy to share what we've learned. And we're on many social medias and uh, all oh, yeah. over the web. We have a web page. It's all Fionathan. And we're the only Fionathan on the World Wide Web. So yes, we're we easy are. So to find. And thank you. Yeah, thanks.